We got a fun one, Pat, after quite a few weeks slash months of kind of serious heavy hitters. We're doing a fan favorite request for more year drafts. And this year we are met by the year 2004, eighth grade, best year of my life. It's all been downhill from there. No spoilers. And uh, I'm here for it. How are you feeling? Uneasy now that you made a little newfound glory reference. And <laughs> I hadn't had any of their tunes on my list. So uh, the mind games are starting early. We haven't done an actual year draft for a while. So it's been a long time. This is kind of where the idea started. And there's obviously only like 10 of them. So. <laughs> We're be trying to space out these ones because these are the kind of heavy hitters and we're getting closer and closer to our actual high school age. So the cho- the picks and the choices become more, uh, I guess, I don't know, not more important because this is just a silly show, but <laughs> it feels heavier and more uh, stakes of are consequence. Higher. So yeah, I feel very uneasy I, to answer your original question if that's what it was. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I... um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. You really threw me with the newfound glory thing. Like, it's weird how something so small. But yeah, no, how, how are you? How, how's everything on your end? This, I believe, is... I'm not sure when this episode is going to air, so I don't want to say anything of consequence one way or the other. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, we're doing a couple uh, out of time. Like, I want to check in and see how you are, but I also... Maybe oh. you shouldn't tell me. <laughs> well... Because <laughs> that might give the list. Right. Depending on the airing date, I am newly 29 <laughs> so yay um, i had a birthday i hope it was good we are in quarantine so we're doing my absolute favorite thing to do on my birthday which is nothing yay so- <laughs> oh my god what is it today no 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 okay the 22nd i was like i didn't think okay i okay <laughs> yes you are an older man now Yep. Getting back on my skateboard. I, you know, actually, let me just say we did our new year's resolution episode a few months ago and there's a couple things that have moved around, but one of them that I would like to formally add to the show, to the canon of this podcast is I bought a skateboard and I wanted to land a kickflip by my 29th birthday. I have done that multiple times over. My goal before I hit 30 is to land a tray flip. I'm really excited about it. It was my favorite move in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. I always picked Steve Caballero because I think it was square into the left or square down and left, and he would do a 360 flip, and it was like visually my favorite trick, and it was the easiest one to get to with Steve Caballero. So uh, anyway, that's my history with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. We have to do one of those drafts at some point. Yeah, we should. I'm gonna be. I was always Bucky Lassick. Oh, really? <laughs> just because I like the name. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that although actually. Well, I shouldn't divulge this, but Bob Burnquist's name has proven to be quite important to the cybersecurity of all my sh**. <laughs> what? <laughs> I guess I've already said too much. <laughs> but um, no, I got a piece of mail from a guy that was a wrong address at one of the places I was living where the wrong mail was addressed to a guy that had kind of a similar name to a name that reminded me of, I mean, Burnquist is very specific. Um, it wasn't that specific name. Anyway, long story short, or long story long, um, some passwords prior to the current ones I have had elements of Bob Burnquist's name in them. Oh my God. Um, they've been adjusted over time. It's like a ever morphing c- collaboration of, you know, past passwords and things like that. As I, I change them every six months or so, but yeah, Bob Burnquist played a role in that for like a two year period there. Oh my um, gosh. L- little, little me trivia for you. Just, you know, we're having fun. We're having a good time. Wait, you change your passwords every six months? I, I try to keep up, add some, you oh know, my God, unique dude. symbols and whatnot. I still have passwords that were the names of girlfriends I dated in like middle school. <laughs> <laughs> the yellow dart and then your 422 would be my guess for some of them, but... <laughs> Mostly, I'd guess all the Homestar references I could think of first. Right. If I ever, for some reason, had to crack into your bank to save the world or something, <laughs> I'd be like, uh, somebody start watching Home Run Stunner, Homestar Runner now, write down everything you can about the Elder Dart, <laughs> bring it back to me in 12 hours. I don't know why there's like an Apollo version of your life in my head. Anyway, uh, I'll say this. I'm rooting for you as a friend to land that, but I'm going to add this in just as motivation. You're never going to land that trick. Stop trying. <laughs> Again, I really want you to, but hopefully that drives you, is the driver you need to really pull it off someday. 
Appreciate it, man. I will. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, actually. It, uh, it snowed a foot in Denver recently, uh, at the time of recording this episode anyway. So I wait for it to melt, get back in the tennis court, what is, which is currently closed due to COVID-19. So I have the whole place to myself, smooth concrete or clay or whatever the hell it is, and uh, ready to rip. But more importantly, I'm ready to rip on this 2004 draft because, like you said, they're just getting harder with time as we become more cognizant of the music that's happening at that time. I'm starting to feel deeper connections to these songs. And uh, 2004 was actually it was kind of a hard year because there's I don't think there's many songs that I think are like that God tier, but there's many a rate songs. I think we might just have to get the F into it then. All right. Let me um God let me tier. Gra- Ooh wee, T Shane. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Let me grab my dice real quick. Can I just say that if you steal pieces of me by Ashley Simpson in the number one slot, I'm gonna be uh, very upset. <laughs> I would never consider it. <laughs> well, the reason I bring it up is because it, I've wanted to bring it up on this show for a while. It's pretty good. The name Simpson aside. So whoever got paid to write that, you know, for for the uh, label, <laughs> uh, wrote a pretty snap. It's probably Adam Schlesinger, honestly. If I haven't done oh the research, God. but it's very good. It's very good. Pieces of me. Did that come out this year? I believe it's it's in my honorable mentions. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing it up as you grab your dice because I thought it was funny. And yes, I believe it's in in the pool. All right. Well, I'll leave that one for you, my friends. Um, I've got the dice here. And actually, I set them down at random, and the numbers showing is a two and a two, which is my birthday. And on top is a four. Oh, my God. I was born on 422. Totally coincidence. Anyways, let me roll these oh suckers. God. No, that means you should get to choose. <laughs> No, it's fine. We'll roll them. Um, nothing special about these dice in particular. Uh, they are uh, wood dice that were actually cut by freaking laser beams, man. Uh- <laughs> Ooh, freaking laser. Anyway, let's do it. Uh, oh, are you, do you want to do evens or odds? Um, your birthday stuff is even, so I'll go odd. Oh, appreciate that, man. Let me, uh, let me get the mic ready. Here we go. We got a three and a four. For a total of seven. Hey, I think if you're a gambler, I think that's craps. I think I got the craps, which means I win the craps. <laughs> you got the craps, man. <laughs> Rarely a good thing, but in this case it is. Right. I've had them all my life. I knew it, the, the craps was inside me. Um, okay. So I'm going to choose to go. Mm, there's so much pressure to go two, three. Can I just go first? I think for this draft, I'd like to just make a, a, a number one pick. Go for it. Okay. Keen, somewhere only we know. I was just about to take that one. I doubt that. I think I might. Really? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was like, man, sometimes like our, our flow for the show isn't like, you know, on 100%. And I'll be like, oh my God, I didn't even know you love Keen. But I, I, I like knew you didn't. Anyway, Lily <laughs> Allen covers it. It's, um, oh man, it's one of those stop what you're doing and lie on the floor songs in a beat, in a really dangerous way of all the, of all the lay on the floor, stop what you're doing, you know, th- you know, just gasp a deep breath and, you know, stare into space songs we've mentioned on the show. This might be the most dangerous to me personally. I think we've mentioned those dangerous songs. Uh, yeah, Somewhere Only We Know. Um, I don't know, just uh, just go listen to it. Just like take a minute, shut everything off, put your phone off or, you know, play it on your phone, whatever. But yeah, it's got some... Uh, Keen is... I wish we had an opportunity to talk about them more on the show, but um, they have three or four songs that... I mean, you can't sleep on them. You shouldn't sleep on Keen. I guess... I don't really know what I'm trying to say other than the fact that I want the world to know if you listen to this show that Somewhere Let Me Know is awesome and uh, is danger. It's just dangerous, man. But the thing is, it's not like you can just add it to a playlist casually later in life because it just has so much with it that it's associated with in my mind. I don't know. I know you have songs like that, Tom, but was this even on your radar at all? No, actually, the only keen story I have or even awareness of them was... 
Um, when I was dating Hannah, I was at visiting her college in Maryland and we sat front row at a comedy show and the dude made me stand up for the whole crowd. I was actually wearing my world of music t-shirt that Zach and I got for staying out overnight for the world of music, uh, warehouse sale where we didn't even have, want to buy anything. We just wanted it for the story. Anyway, the dude made me stand up and said, I looked like the lead singer of Keen. And you look like Soupy Campbell too. I look, yeah. <laughs> and someone said, I look like, um, Ru- uh, Rusco, is that the the DJ name? Rusco. Someone said that a while ago. Anyway, I had this conflict of jealousy where I was the most jealous person in the world when I was seventeen, and Hannah agreed I did look like the guy from Keen. I was like, oh, so you think the guy from Keen is cute? <laughs> <laughs> Just like ready to be angry about anything. Being seventeen. <laughs> Never again, dude. <laughs> Very Never upset again. about tiny stuff. That's me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I guess I'll just go die now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which, you know, bringing it full circle, is how Keen makes me feel. Uh, no, Somewhere Let Me Know is um, really good. I like it a whole lot. I wanted it off the board just because I want it to kind of be on my five. I, I, I know that's not playing the strategy correctly. I just... You know, anyway, that's my pick. You get two and three. All right. Two and three. Wow. I have some that you definitely will not pick. I think I might want to play the strategy. We go through phases where sometimes we want to win and sometimes we want to make a point. We've been doing the show long enough where it's like, it's kind of like an ongoing like risk league or something, or, you know, it's just kind of like playing cribbage (laughs) with your buddy for like 60 years, you know, like, uh, Part of it's more, it's not about who wins the cribbage game, it's how it's won and how it's played. You know, it's, um, <laughs> I, I played Risk recently, virtually during the quarantine with some friends from college because we always used to play oh. um, at OU. And um, it was very nerdy, but also high stakes. It felt weirdly important. Like we would <laughs> just for hours, just we'd play two or three games a night. It got, it got hated, but um, oh it was God. more about who, how people were winning after like, you know, a few dozen games and oh, stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. anyway, I, I appreciate the give and take. So I'm curious to see where you go with this. I only played risk once and I was bamboozled. So I lost hardcore. It's not fun um, to be bamboozled. It's not at all. <laughs> Ask Burgermeister Meisterberger in Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> He's definitely not a fan of being bamboozled. Can you blame him? Sorry. You said you said such a specific reference that sorry, I'll I'll let you go. I'm really tempted to just straight pick five songs off of where you want to be. Mm. Because it's like one of my favorite albums of all time. But I think I'm gonna just pick one. My first round pick is gonna be 180 by summer. By taking back Sunday, you know, um, I don't know if I'm mad or happy. Uh, that's, <laughs> I, it's tough because it's not like anyone's favorite song, but it's everyone. It's the most important song. Oh, it's like the that's probably my favorite on the album. No, I know it's mine too, but like it's not the oh. most enjoyable <laughs> to listen to. It's kind of like not similar to Keen, but like similar in the sense that it's a gut wrenching process although you've vocalized on the show before that <laughs> that's what you enjoy about music in general and i'm not saying right, that in a joking right. way but like legitimately i could see how i mean my best side is your worst invention is um mm. i mean they are firing on all cylinders on that album we should just yeah. do that album oh, episode yeah. already i know oh god i know i know but i kind of just want to do it like it would be fun to do 11 episodes in a row song by song of that album <laughs> I am not even close to opposed to that. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely on board. <laughs> so yeah, 180 by Summer. I really, really, really love that one. It makes me feel, yeah, devastatingly heartbroken over something I I don't even know. Maybe it's something yet to come. <laughs> it's just I, I know it's going to take me to that place. It does it every time. The back and forth vocals, it layers and layers. You almost expect the album to end on that song, but then it just keeps <laughs> going it's so good it sounds like 2004 was a very eighth grade year for us which it actually was because we were wanting to feel pain that we didn't know about yet <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> these super heavy songs that were like man it's tough as we experience things that aren't that tough i guess but right also fun fact 2004 was the year we met in eighth grade hey. for the listeners so good time i'm club, I'm club years, horning that dude. in my heart our relationship is getting their learner's permit this year. <laughs> hey, oh, interesting way to think about it. 
very creative, very nice. Yeah, that eighth grade was like, you know, could you save the change you get from paying for your school lunch with cash long enough to score a Hawaiian punch from the vending machine once every like two weeks? <laughs> and it was <laughs> back when Hawaiian punch was a pretty top-notch beverage you could secure. Uh, times oh, yeah. have changed. Um, I remember just viewing that as a delicacy, like, oh my God, you know. I <laughs> wasn't sure if it was a hat or his hair. You know, there's just a lot to it. The experience was very enjoyable for me. Anyway. Well, well, dude, think about me coming from Catholic school oh, it was you know, probably up to a seventh grade. Freaking freak show for you, like circus fun dude, fest. Lunch, you could get whatever you wanted. There were like eight different options, or you can just get like a soft pretzel with nacho cheese. <laughs> like it was a fucking carnival, dude. <laughs> Anyways, we're only on our number one picks. This is uh we need to speed this up. <laughs> so um I'm going to go for the gut and say Helena by My Chemical Romance. Wait, a, wait, 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 wait. What if you didn't do that? <laughs> okay, so I thought you were either going to pick that or I'm not okay. And I thought you would surely go for I'm not okay. I'm not divulging my industry secrets to you. <laughs> Get out of my trade magazine. Get the corn out of my face. <laughs> my fans. um yeah helena it's a good pick. this is uh this is a song i think i found on the fuse channel which is like channel 329 or something on my mom's like old crtv and i remember seeing the music video which i think we're planning before this summer doing a helena episode right yeah it's peak goth although yeah. i'm oh, too poser yeah. to even suggest those things but it's a fucking <laughs> f- funeral musical. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, Ballet. Like, like I feel weird making claims of like the tags for subgenres and stuff on this show, especially ones I haven't taken part in the communities of. But if a mu- <laughs> funeral musical isn't goth, then my grasp on reality is not right, I guess. So forgive me, I guess, world, as always. We've we've referenced a lot of music videos we think are good on the show, but I think in terms of like pure artistry, this would have to be one of the best, right? Um, uh, that's a big ass question, and I don't think it's, I don't mean one of my favorite. I just mean like in no, terms I know of art. um artistry. Oh gosh, um, you know, honestly, the All American Rejects gives you hell music video has such a specific like. Oh, what sure. Tim Burton views suburbia to be tone to it. So like in another, <laughs> like artsy doesn't have to be Tim Burton's view of what every other one of his movies looks like would be. But um, actually I only know art to be what Tim Burton does. I, oddly enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to say it's got to be up there as one of them. You know, we, we have an episode where we make fun of the make damn sure video. They're just in a freezer. <laughs> with uh, stock footage of like nature documentaries from PBS and shit. so, I would say Helena at least is better than that. And every Blink video where it's just teens escaping from class or jail to kiss. So, um, <laughs> I think yes, I would say it's definitely one of the more top notch. I'm agreeing with you. It's a roundabout way of saying yes, 100. percent You know, in real time, I'll let the listeners hear this. I actually made a GIF of the teenagers making out through the glass walls and i thought that was a pretty good uh quarantine gif i'm gonna have to put that up on twitter i forgot about it until just now <laughs> so. i hope people are sneaking up to each other's houses and kissing their windows and stuff i mean that's <laughs> healthy what what more could you do well um it's your turn you get two two picks now right that's how is a strong pick because is it even the i don't know three cheers is such a such a experience it's not what we're talking about it's a hell of an album (laughs) yeah i mean it's just like man okay okay uh okay goodness gracious great balls um let's do this shall we let's do float on by modest mouse sure (laughs) which um was oh man that, that made every like it was fun to make playlists back when they first became I mean, mixtapes were a thing before playlists, so everything on the show, you know, everything repeats. But when you first got your first iPod and you were like, I'm making playlists, it, (laughs) I think Float On was on every single one of them. 
until maybe f- two years ago. So <laughs> um, I think I forget the name of the artist who sampled it to make like a hip hop. I'm out of my element already, but made like a rap song out of it. Basically, um, I'll have to look it up while you're answering, so I could have the answer to that in a couple minutes. But uh, no, it's great. I don't really love Modest Mouse. Like. There's not a front to back album of theirs. I've really sat down and been like, this is what I've been looking for. But Float On is um, <laughs> great. I love it so much. Um, sounds like, based on your initial reaction, they're not your fave. I don't think I've ever heard a Modest Mouse song, but I. I've, I don't know how many times I can tell all of these stories on the podcast before people tell me to stop, but I just inherently hate this band because when we were like 16, we were trying to record at the studio. We were told to come in on like, you know, Wednesday the 17th, whatever. We call on Wednesday the 17th, dude doesn't show up. We don't record because he forgot about us and went to a Modest Mouse concert. So we never got to record our song at this nice studio. And I blame Modest Mouse for it. So fuck Modest Mouse. <laughs> Oh, well, apparently he's a, he's, every magazine feature about him is like, I almost showed up at his house. He came out of his room two hours later. I'm saying this guy goes on his own clock. You know what I'm saying? Beats of his own <laughs> drum. Wait, like they write around the fact that he's maybe kind of just a, a douche, but um, I like enough Modest Mouse songs to say that uh, it was important to me for sure. And, and, you know, we kind of talked about on our Upsides episode, the Wonder Years, the Upsides episode that through all the like, Hey, you ever think about taking a blade to your own skin? Stuff that was going on. Like <laughs> there had to be some days where you weren't, you know, start kicking it off with that stuff. And float on yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of a strangely, it was like, a, you know, instead of uh, Max Beam is telling people that their bags are swell and stuff. It was, um, you know, it was just, <laughs> hey, maybe things will be all right. Possibly. Again, the rotation was heavy, you know, pretty heavy otherwise, but um, liked it a lot. It was Lupe Fiasco, by the way, that sampled that song years later. Uh, but, okay. That was going to bug me if I didn't look it up. I'm going to say my number three track will be, you know, this is what's tough is because Is A Real Boy, I think, is in play here as well, Mm -hmm. as well as Hot Fuss. So there's some things. I'm just going to start throwing stuff at you to try to confuse you to see which direction I'm going. Am I going to zig or am I going to zag? Am I going to pick an Ashley Simpson song? I mean, there's a lot (laughs) on the table that I could do. Also, The Chariot came out with an album this year. That, uh, I'm worried about you stealing my Chariot takes. <laughs> also, Chariot by Gavin DeGraw came uh, out. Oh, into, no, oh. I'm just kidding. I, I know, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't know when that, I don't know when that Actually, song came out. Actually, I do remember that song coming out in eighth grade. <laughs> so. That's, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like it didn't bang. I'm not going to pretend like it didn't bang. That song um, was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. It was so good. Okay, um, yeah, you, if we're going to, you know, in real in drafts in uh, like sports, right? There's runs on, you know, if somebody starts taking QBs, you're worried you're not going to get yours, or blah 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 blah. Uh, so you already started the run on three cheers to sweet revenge tracks. I'm going to go ahead and lock in my I'm not okay pick now. Um, I don't want it to not be on my on my list. So yeah, lock it in. My Gumble romance. I'm not okay. Just we've done an episode on the music video. It is. Uh, I think what's awesome about having James McCallion as a friend when we were young was being at his house and his brother having shown him these music videos that we got to see. So you get to see, and I didn't have cable and stuff growing up, blah, 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 dial up was whatever, whatever. So you're like, oh my God, I'm watching a music video. Like that still felt kind of new for some (laughs) reason. This was maybe like the year before it's like, oh dude, no, AOL Sessions, Fuse, everything, like MTV, everyone's playing. There's like four different indie music channels at that point that, you know, were kind of thriving as we got to the middle of our high school careers. But um, yeah, just seeing a dude look that sickly and rocking in the garage (laughs) and the whole like, I don't know, emo has been around, like we talked maybe on the show before, I'm not sure, but of a book I'm reading by Andy Greenwald called Nothing Feels Good about the birth of emo. Seems like everything stemmed from Ian MacKay's brain and heart, but apparently that DC (laughs) scene also, also... Rights of Spring came from that from came from that scene, which wasn't a Makai band, but um, you know they are apparently were the first emo band. So it, obviously MCR wasn't the first to do it, but for our age group, it was like okay, this is uh, let's latch onto this big time hot topic, all that stuff. So iconic, important, um, good that two songs off that album at least got picked during this draft. Yeah, yeah. Again, hell of an album. We could probably just go on for the rest of the draft on that album as well. The thing is, I think, didn't American Idiot also come out this year? Oh, yes, it did, Pat. (laughs) Damn it. See, 
at some point it's not fun <laughs> except that it's very fun but it's like do we do 15 or 20 <laughs> i know, <laughs> you know? five like, is ridiculous yeah right we yeah maybe we'll do two bonuses to seven or something but it's already pretty heated i'm interested to see where you go next <sighs> Because I feel like I know the rest of what you're going to pick. I kind of want to let maybe you have you do, it maybe just you go for my own stuff. Because I kind of see this no, as collaborative. At the end of the day, we end up with one playlist on Apple Music and Spotify, which, True. again, you can find in the show notes uh, for this episode. But, uh, yeah, that's hard. Because there's so many good ones left, songs I know we both I say, love. don't think about me or my feelings. I got, I got honorable mentions. I got things to fall back okay. on. Do it. So this is one that 2004 Tom was feeling with all of his heart. I don't know if I would pick it today, but trying to go back in time, I would have picked Welcome to My Life by Simple Plan. Yes. I'm glad you picked that. Why are you built that up like that was one of my like big big ones? Are you saying what you're going to no, pick? No, 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 no. I'm just I'm trying to not pick the big ones. So Right, but you should pick the big one. <laughs> well, all right. Welcome to my life. Unless it's what's her name? Sorry. I'll let uh, you know. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I've i got like four that are, you could p- <laughs> pick at any time. But Welcome to My Life was like, you know, I, I had an abusive stepfather and they, this song just like perfect, you know, hit me right around when uh, my mom was leaving him. And then after they divorced or like around that time, they divorced in 2004, I think Welcome to My Life just came out. And it was like, again, that, that, this is getting real heavy on what's supposed to be a fun episode, but the dude was a sociopath. So everyone's like, Oh, your stepdad's so cool. He's so awesome. It's like, you don't, you don't know him the way he is, you know? And, um, so there's a part of me that just like felt like no one even understands what I'm talking about. So the song welcome to my life was just like, someone gets me, you know, and it's simple plan sent from the great white North to let me know other people feel the way that I do. And it was also like, I was learning drums 2003 I think I got my first in <laughs> only drum set that I still own but I was really starting to get to get into drums around 2004 and welcome to my life was one that I just played like over and over for months I loved the drum beat the fills were simple I just remember playing this on repeat in my room for hours every single day so in 2004 this is a very important song to me and I want to get it on the list no matter how this band is perceived now they still rip still killing it and to live in the mood a little bit I'm going to go all downhill from here um again very important song to me but probably closer to like 2005 or 6 we just did So it was foreshadowing. Oh, uh, were you going to pick it? <laughs> No, at the beginning of the episode, you were like, it's all oh, yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, Don't want to yeah. spoil anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, we just did an episode on this not that long ago. The music video is wild. I, again, people say that like it's not one of their best songs. It was actually one of the worst performing episodes we've had in months. So it's made me believe that not many people <laughs> love this band well, as weird. much it's as like I do. One of the pop punk defining hits of the decade, but it's also not their most exciting song. Sure. By a long shot. You know, it's weird because it's like, it's huge, but it's also maybe their most, it's maybe the most vanilla hit on their part yeah. or something. I don't no, know. No, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I Maybe just... not in real time, but over time you're like, yeah, yeah, it was one of their hits. It was good. You know, it's, now if I'm at one of their shows live, you know, it's like rock on, right? Awesome. Um, yeah. But over time you're like, you know, maybe My Friends Over You and songs like that um, story so far kind of over time or like cult hits maybe more so but it's so good though i think maybe what you could say is that it's an incredible song but it could be anyone's song it's not uniquely newfound glory maybe would be accurate i'm not really okay. sure but i i lime wired all of their singles freshman year of high school and i specifically remember being in ninth grade algebra class with mr garline who was a total asshole and dan majeski sat to my right and seth was in that class behind me i think and i vividly remember hearing quiet things that no one ever knows for the first time in that class and listening to the like eight singles i had from newfound glory and still those are the songs i know most from that band was whatever limewire gave me that one day and 
freshman year was kind of difficult, I guess. And just being in math class and hating the teacher, just blasting all downhill from here on my blue four gig iPod mini, which like if I were an eccentric millionaire, I would pay whatever cost to like buy a brand new unopened for like the blue iPod mini. I love that thing so much. Um, yeah, it's just a really nostalgic song. You got good use out of it. Oh yeah. I, yeah, (laughs) I don't know what you do with four gigs these days, but, um, yeah, I love that. Ride your bike until all the songs have played shockingly (laughs) soon and you start it over. The thing about being kind of younger and listening to music, it's like, Man, let's run it back. I don't have anything going right. on. You know, it's like, <laughs> like it's like how many? How did I know all these albums? I haven't listened to like a new album all the way through, except for maybe only Charlie Bliss in like the last two calendar years. But like <laughs> when you're younger, it's like no, I no times. I've got time. I can't drive. I can do it. I can't do. Shit. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> right. Fill up the four gig and just set it to repeat eighteen <laughs> times while I don't sleep for like a week and somehow still have a rubber brain and joints that don't seem tired ever. <laughs> That is such an accurate description of what it is to be a an emo teenager. <laughs> like, <laughs> God. Well, Jesse, my wife, talks about it a lot. She's just like, I really can't describe to you how much that was on repeat for me, like months and days. You know, when we talk about when I talk about playing Snood and listening to these songs over and over again. Oh yeah. I mean hours and hours like Bill Gates was coding when he was a youth. I was just listening to I'm not okay on repeat. <laughs> or like <laughs> Um, what's that one, uh, Sing the Sorrow by AFI? What's that one? Dancing Through Sunday is that song. I listened to that like, oh my God. My mom even walked into the room. She's like, okay, I'm not mad. Just stop listening to this one. <laughs> it's been hours. You know, it's just like, stop it. Stop doing this. Like, uh, anyway. <laughs> But you want to analyze it. You want to learn it. You want to hear the different layers. Yeah. You don't know anything about mixing or anything yet. So it's kind of like, First date by Blink. You listen to it, oh. and you kind of hear some different guitar parts after the four hundredth and fifth five hundredth listen, and things like that. It's um, you know, it's fun. Yeah i I would do anything for that amount of time, you know, freely available to me again. Hands down, I'm also the least busy I've ever been in the past ten years, <laughs> and it still doesn't even come close to how much time I had as a teenager. I could play RuneScape for sixteen hours straight if I wanted to, like every other day. And trust me, I did <laughs> while listening to Riot by Paramore and say it like you mean it by the starting line for years. Just played RuneScape in my basement listening to those albums. See, I didn't know you liked the starting line that much. I didn't know you. I didn't know that was one of your front to backers. It, it was, yeah. I mean, not anymore. I don't really remember. Well, actually, that's funny because when we were prepping for the Best of Me episode, I was listening to the album thinking like, man, I don't know this album at all, but I knew like almost every word to every song. I forgot, like I forgot the words, but my brain held on to them somewhere in some f***ing cobwebbed storage cabinet in the back. <laughs> Hell yeah. If we have learned anything from this show, it's that it's there. Stuff you don't even know is there is there, which you blow my mind every like six episodes or so. You're like, no, that was like your for a long time. I'm like, (laughs) and then I'll listen to it for the next week before we record again. And, you know, just like be like, you know, my eyes are fried. I'm like all all of a sudden smoking two cigarettes at once, staring through the (laughs) FaceTime like I can't find it. (laughs) Uh, Anyway. Okay. I've kind of lost track of uh, where we were at. What did you just pick? And do you have another one coming up next? Or is... Welcome to my life and all downhill from here. Then you have two. Oh, enough for me. Your, uh, gotcha. your picks four and five, actually. We're we're closing it out. Yeah. I mean, we've gone for a little while now, yeah. usually the length of the episode. So we could have gone. What's tough is maybe, you know, some with these year drafts, there's only so much time, this and that. Maybe we'll revisit some of them as we go back and see what we missed. Maybe there's like, you know, our B-side draft series or something after oh, so totally. much time if we're lucky, That'd be lucky awesome. enough to still be doing the show. Um, Let's do this. Every Man Has a Molly by Say Anything. Knew it. Oh, well, yes. Part of me, like my instinct is to be like, you don't know me, <laughs> but like you do. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> also, we talked about that song at length like a month ago. So. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, if you listen to the show, you know, I came into it late. Uh, is a real boy. I'm not going to lie and say that I, the day it came out was like, yes, I understand Max Bemis and I am 14 and I know these <laughs> themes. Um, 
but in college, it made a resurgence in my life, uh, say anything did. Um, man, Every Man is a Molly is, I don't know if it's because the female reference in the song is so Irish, like so notably Irish or something. Um, but there's something about that song and, it, you know, you damn kids better be gracious with the merch money you spend and stuff. It's yeah. definitely a young band saying bold stuff, trying different things. I think saying anything was all over the place in a wonderfully chaotic way. I think that's why they're, you know, loved because they took so many risks and the fact that they paid off made them kind of, you know, not work for some people, but work really, really well for others. You know, if it's too vanilla, it's not great, which is kind of, I guess, the Imagine Dragons experiment. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think... <laughs> The Imagine That's what Dragons you come here, folks. experiment. <laughs> that was like low key one of the hottest takes we've had in weeks. <laughs> it almost slid right under the radar. <laughs> so here's the thing: I talk about seeing Weezer so often. My sister and I had gone to Vegas, and we were too young to like have too much fun. Um, so we were like, "Do we go to a Vegasy thing where you know we're siblings?" Luckily, we snuck into a David Spade show, and it was super funny. We're like, "Thank God we didn't." You know, oh, nice. anyway, Vegas is a weird <laughs> place that usually isn't that fun. Anyway, it was terrible. We were really there. <laughs> yeah. So the next night we were going to the Hard Rock Casino to see Weezer play. And Imagine Dragons, you know, the Killers are from Vegas. Imagine Dragons are from Vegas. Um, they were an up and coming band at the time. They had a female keyboardist and a lot of their songs were, I thought they had a decent EP going. And then two years later, they're, they're like, the girl keyboardist was gone as far as I remember. And they were playing these like anthem rock abc college football commercial songs all the time and stuff <laughs> they were like this is what people listen to on like high school basketball mixtapes and stuff like before games i'm like well something happened in this like <laughs> you know 14 month period because that's not the band i just saw unfortunately <laughs> but i really loved them for like a year i was interesting had only seen them because i happened to be at that weezer show but yeah there was like th some of their songs their earlier stuff but then they you know, nitpicked some of those early st songs and put out to put on their first album. Um, and then they became kind of, I guess this decade's Nickelback. Man, we're really going hard on Imagine Dragons this episode. I'll try to wrap this up. But <laughs> anyway, yeah, I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> uh, I just like, what happened? I don't know. I really liked them for like a short period of time. And then they became a different band almost. Kind of crazy. Anyway, Every Man Has a Molly. Um, yeah, just, I think we really, you know, don't want to beat a, beat a dead horse but max bemis is good at his job and is a real boy is one of the best say anything albums and it's one of those songs towards the end of the album where you kind of you know you're kind of rewarded for hanging in there and uh a lot of suicidal themes and stuff it's a little heavy I, yeah i mean i think what we're getting from this draft is that eighth grade is as heavy as a teen's willing to feel about <laughs> anything for any reason you know what i mean so um, I think that's the headspace we were all in. Uh, I have another pick. My final one, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go with Smile Like You Meet It Off Hot Fuss. I think it'd be silly not to have a okay. Hot Fuss tune. I know I'm kind of not... I'm leaving American... There was too many. We're getting to... It's like a, some years you're just scraping the barrel. This year is like we weren't going to do a good version of this draft no matter yeah, what. Too many. Um, but I think... To stick with the eighth grade was unnecessarily heavy internally theme. Um, you're starting to learn that like, hey, huh, I feel a certain way. And then like 12 years later, you're like, not much has changed. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, past that phase, because it's been more than 12 years since 2004, obviously. But um, anyway, Smile Like You Mean It, I think Gun To My Head is one of my favorite Hot Fuss tracks. Um you know, someone will drive her around on the same streets that I did type stuff. Again, themes you're way too young to even come close to grasping. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we're having fun. It was in that binder my sister gave me, which I, you know, lovingly reference on the show a lot. Um, it was one of the distinct pleasures in my life, sorting through that binder and just press and play. Again, we talk about the time you have before you have your learner's permit and right, stuff to drive. Right. So um, just cool, more CDs. Like I had a full binder for like a two year period <laughs> post nude era where I was just pressing play and listening. Um, jet, white stripes, all sorts of stuff. So um, really Hot Fuss was uh, big time in the rotation there. And it would be unfortunate, an unfortunate mistake for me not to include it on my five. I can't believe it did five, but really for time purposes, it makes sense. But yes, that would round out my five, I think, honestly. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm going to double down on that and say Mr. Brightside. That was mm. um, 
Also, just James McCallion was such an influential. Oh, he was our original Sherpa on the show. He like we like coined the term for him pretty much. Yeah, no, he introduced me to so much music, specifically in 2004, because he was in uh, went to right. you know, eighth grade. Man, or we should just have a James episode. I feel like we're realizing so much shit happened this year specifically in our musical journeys that yeah. there's got to be more to mine out of this what we're talking about here. But yeah, I mean my. I have so many, so many like vivid memories of eighth grade because it was just such a huge like culture shock. And like for a year, I felt like home almost a little bit. Like it was the the relationships, the fun, um, the conversations. The hot pretzels. I had the, the the hot pretzels I'd been hoping to have my entire life. I I never connected with anyone really in middle school at Catholic school, and I went into you know afraid of public school, thinking like oh it's going to be like the stereotypes of like it's going to be rough and like bullies and this and that, and it was just like a hundred percent pure fun for an entire year. And again, it was amplified by the fact that my abusive stepfather we moved out of the house you know different part of town whatever and it was just i have so many good memories and i part of me feels so weird for like always bringing it up because it's like oh poor dude's trying to relive his glory days like my glory days cannot possibly have been eighth grade like it's got to get better than that but the music especially it it was pretty good i mean they had like a a track they had for some reason small stuff when you're young seems really nice, but they had this like track event for our eighth grade gym class, like final or something, but the whole grade was in it. It was like, yeah, everyone pick an event and do it. And I remember you ran the hurdles and your long hair was flowing and everyone's like, yeah, new kid, Tom jumping and like, go get it. You know, everyone was in the bleachers. It was a fun day. I remember that. Mr. Proper tried to um, draft me onto the track team and apparently my triple jump. Oh, it was a scam. (laughs) Wait, what? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they were trying to get recruit for the track team for sure. I'm in, in hindsight, but yeah, I, I mean, you have you have some spring. You were an athlete. I mean, you downplay it now, but you skateboard. You played soccer. My uh, my triple jump would have qualified for states after like a week of trying to do it. <laughs> no, and, yeah, I think <laughs> I remember jumping the high jump and just like jumping high or something. <laughs> like I was like. Yeah, that that'll do it for all the stuff, but I, you know, enjoy baseball too much and they both happen to be in the spring, but for a minute there I had asked my baseball coach if I could do both. He's like, "Uh, oh, no." Not, I guess. <laughs> you like, like oh, broke right. a school record though. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> it was um Mr. D who coached the 7th and 8th grade football team. I think made a point to make a thing out of it, but he was like, "And now over at the high jump station, like over the loudspeaker, the whole thing was like <laughs> Pat Holmes is going for the, you know, the junior high, you know, high jump record or whatever. <laughs> so everyone looked over and it filled, you know, butterflies. Got, my steps got a little springier or whatever and just, <laughs> you know, jumped as high as a suburban white kid's expected to, I guess, in that scenario. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the, the roar, the small roar from the crowd was definitely uh, like one of those things you don't think about a lot. Like for as often as you think about this stuff that brings you down, like when your brain is sorting through random memories before you're trying to go to sleep or whatever, that's one where it's like, man, that was a good day. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that was a pretty yeah. good day. I probably listened to Float On that day as opposed to I'm not okay. You know, like, <laughs> as I got my uh, Polar Pop with Tom heading over to Zach's house to re- record a really <laughs> shitty demo with Jared Catoni for our oh band's first. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Now we're gosh. just alienating the audience by referencing people by name and stuff. Wait, was that after track day? No, I'm just okay. Okay, <laughs> this is like you're you're a give and take with me always is um and rightfully so because if you let me get too imaginative, I would just mash it all into one narrative that happened in the same month. Uh, no, it, they were years apart, probably. No, but, no, um, no. It was eighth grade. I do specifically remember that. But anyway, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Um, <laughs> right. I think you. The more we know each other, I'm glad you still ask because it'd be different if you just let me go crazy like that. Because. <laughs> I think, and this is, I don't even know if this is pod worthy, but I remember being in Zach's backyard and there was a fire and it was like one of my first kisses or whatever. And, uh, with, you know, a a particular young lady. And I remember you were around or something or came back from grabbing a soda or something. It was very, like very junior high. And you're like, oh, I thought you guys broke up. And which was, (laughs) it was like one of those fact checking things where it was technically correct. 
But in the moment, why <laughs> bring it up, I guess? But and again, <laughs> what does junior high breakup even mean and stuff? So it's just like, you know, uh, I, that always has stuck in my head. It's just kind of like, nope, you're right. That's a good point. I'm so good sorry. Point. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, things worked out. Things worked out. But anyway, no, if you stopped correcting me, it'd be weird at this point. You know what I mean? If you stopped being like, wait, was, that wasn't the same day. I'd be like, no, you're right. It wasn't. But it'd be fun if it was. What if all our memories happened in the same 24 hours? <laughs> well, you know what? There's there's too many good picks on the table. Let's each take a bonus pick. You go first. All right. I'll let you go first. No, you Ooh, go first. But we got, okay, bonus. Okay, 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 okay. And I'm just. Hmm. Oh, here's one. Okay. You ready for this? Sure. This is one I found later in life. It's not even period appropriate, but it's one that I have a lot of fun with. Mushaboom by Feist. I fucking love Mushaboom by Feist. There was like, I don't know, she had that one album with one, two, three, four on it and Mushaboom and all this stuff. I don't know. She hit the scene super hot. And um, Mushaboom's a great song. And it's about rural Michigan. I don't know. Anything about Big Ten country that, you know, Sue John Stevens was about to write shit about all the Big Ten states, and, or maybe all 50 <laughs> states, but, you know, it's like, yeah, write about Michigan. Anybody, just write about the Midwest or the Rust Belt. I'm into it, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, talking about a snowy day, snowy Christmas and mush boom It's like, yeah, I'm into it. I want it. Uh, but also, I kind of want to pick all these other ones. Positive Jam by The Hold Steady might be the one I actually want to pick. Although I wasn't even into them till later. What? Okay, let me pick a period correct one. I don't want to pick mush boom Um <sighs> Okay, here's my favorite quarantine song off of American Idiot, Novocaine. I'm gonna pick Novocaine for my for my song. Wow. Is it is my it bonus. give me Novocaine or just Novocaine? I think the title's Novocaine. Okay. Maybe it is give me either way. I it came on shuffle the other day and I'm like, this is a pretty good quarantine song. It's really song. good. It's really good. Um yeah, so I'll just for the f of it, trying to be topical, say that's my bonus track for this draft dude not even trying to be funny i'm gonna pick what's her name by green day so we had two killers and two <laughs> it's green so day good <laughs> man. yeah it's so good some of yeah i mean it's weird 20 2004 i think it's funny how many episodes past episodes we've referenced in this draft because it's like how in the wheelhouse was our eighth grade experience together when we first met and everything it's like oh yeah i guess this is this is all where it started so yeah i guess that checks out let's let's do some uh honorable mentions um one for one each. Yeah. Don't need to explain it too much, but uh, sure. Let's just go give and take. Boom, boom, boom. You go first. Um, who I am hates who I've been by Reliant K. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Um, leave in parentheses. Get out by JoJo. Uh, oh my God! Really? Yeah. Oh dude. wow. Um. I don't know if this the name is called no transitory or no transistory. No. Because LimeWire gave me both versions, but such a good Alexis on Fire song. And this is something, again, because of James McCallion, <laughs> I discovered this band. <laughs> yes. Okay. How about this? My happy ending, Avril Lavigne. Oh, wait, that's Avril mm. Lavigne? Yes. Uh, give me Reinventing Your Exit by Under Oath. Mm, okay okay how about a little uh can i hit you with a little bit of over and over by nelly and tim mcgraw i don't know if i've ever heard it so uh give it you've to me. heard it over okay. and over again hey, you've oh heard it. <laughs> i can take it i can take it no oh yeah what a good one um give me this wouldn't be on my radar until junior maybe senior year of high school but the interviewer i'm only speaking german by the chariot mm. fucking love okay. the chariot okay. <laughs> it starts with a little like and love gavin de Gras. which by the way which by the way came out in 2003 a single came out in 2005 if you average them the chariot came out in 2004 so that's love on it. the table I'm, into it. <laughs> I'm glad thanks for stretching the history for me brother man uh, I won't be left by Tegan and Sarah. Again, sad vibes, but... I don't know any of these not something songs, I, dude. They all... I learned them about them all in college. I, I, as an eighth grader, I was only listening to Hot Fuss, so this is just... <laughs> I know about them now that they came, but they came... But you know what I mean. Yeah, no. Gotcha. It, like, um, Wake Up by Arcade Fire came out, but no one knew about that f***ing song until it was in that... Uh, not Little Rascals movie, the Little Monsters movie, the Where the Wild Things Are, so, you know, uh, it is what it is. 
Um, I really wanted to have something from Chuck by Sum Forty One, but I can't say I listened to any of these out any of these songs really. Um, we also had Futures by Jimmy Eat World, and Move. um, I sorry I, everyone, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's on us. We're going to really, we're working on studying albums for future episodes yes. that we didn't enjoy then. So we don't do that again. We're sorry. <laughs> That's all I have though, for honorable mentions. I'll, I'll do a few more. Uh, American Idiot, Call On Me by Eric Pritz, that weirdly sexual workout video, music video for like the techno era <laughs> on the rise. Call on me. Anyway, um, Take Me Out, Franz Ferdinand, Pieces of Me, Ashley Simpson, Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg. Oh, shit. Um, off, of, off of Rhythm and Gangsta, I believe was the album name. Uh, Milkshake by Kellis, uh, Bringing the Boys oh. to the Yard and whatnot. I'm pretty sure they came out in 04. Again, Wake Up by Arcade Fire. Holla Back Girl by Gwen, uh, Love Angel Music Baby. Uh, that was a moment in the cultural cultureness of the cultural 2000s. So, uh, also No Phone by Cake. Uh, in our little Lake Cliff group, Cake was kind of big. Um, with their little, uh, doom, 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 doom. I don't know, working the top two strings of the guitar and getting pretty famous doing it. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I have. All right. Well, that's a fun one, man. I super enjoy the year drafts. Like, I wouldn't mind extending these past 2010 just for the sake of doing them. Or we can, yeah, we're gonna have to do a month or a year or a series where we address the fact that we've been alive for a whole nother 10 years after these 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> So, you know, uh, in 2011, when we have to draft a bunch of Kid Cudi and Vampire Weekend songs, we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. (laughs) Well, do you want to give a song of the week and then we can head to the post show for Patreon? I think that we probably could do that. Um, Fiona Apple came out with an album called Fetch the Bolt Cutters. I haven't listened to it yet because although when this airs, it might be silly that I hadn't, um... Let's say this, I Want You to Love Me is track one. The day it came out, which is today, the day of recording, I don't know if we're allowed (laughs) to admit that or whatever we should. Uh, Yeah, uh, I will listen to it um, because her her cover of Across the Universe really is just a, you know, you know, wow, right? I mean, obviously she's talented. So everyone who wrote about this album seems to agree that it's, you know, I've a seen flex a lot on her part. So yeah, it's been everywhere on the internet. Now that we're like fake music journalists, as you put it on our Twitter bio, like, <laughs> you know, it, we follow sp- all these magazines and stuff. It's like everyone, everyone raving. So uh, I'm going to listen to it. I'll make it my song of the week just because I'm pretty sure, you know, unless these people are lying, but no, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure Fiona snapped on this one. So let's, uh, you know, put some respect if you hadn't already been putting respect on her name. Yeah. I'll have to check it out, man. Um, Jason Tate over at um, Chorus FM just said quite a few good things about it in his, in his newsletter, so I'll check it out. Um, Neck Deep is coming out with a new record soon, and they put out a music video like two, at the time of recording, yeah, two days ago or so, called When You Know. Such a good pop punk. Um, it, it seems like a show opener, perhaps. Really good, really fun v- really fun song so i've been enjoying that they only have two songs out uh at this time but i really really enjoy neck deep i think actually episode one which only exists if you know where to look for it uh we took off i think 95 of the first 100 episodes off of all of the podcasting platforms my first song of the day ever was neck deep when their new album was in the process of being released back in 2016 so um i think it was serpents so 170 or so episodes later <laughs> they're you back. know they've been replaying a lot of the Cavs championship games on you know they're doing a lot of retro stuff during the quarantine i think it's our four-year anniversary of the show three wait no, man. We're, I moved we're at to about Cleveland. Three, and... No, we're at about three and a half because we started in November 2016. Oh, okay, okay. So we yeah. didn't start right away because I got to Cleveland like the minute the Cavs won. So we must have not have started recording for a little while then. We did a few test episodes. We did two or three test episodes where we talked about um, Creed for like three hours. And I still have the recording. This would have been in like Creed and August. Nickelback. Or, we were talking about... Um, People like joining in. Are they joining in on shitting on them because they are afraid to admit that they were totally, you know, 
banging out to a couple of those hits. <laughs> I don't even know the name of the song, but the Hollywood horror one, it's like, oh, come on, when you were 13, that was your favorite song, whatever. <laughs> Give it up. I'm not saying you liked Rockstar. I'm saying that song was good this summer it came out or whatever. Like, chill out, relax. <laughs> well, before we get too deep into that let's close this one out maybe we can take it to the post show <laughs> oh, we're we're going for another word oh yeah we'll go to the post show anyway thanks for being everybody uh stay safe uh tom i love you buddy all right love you too man see you later Hey everyone, thanks for making it all the way through to this episode. We know the year drafts are a fan favorite. We've been asked for more and more of them as time goes on, but clearly we need to stretch them out. 2004 was such a good year for us, especially being the year that Pat and I met. Lots of great memories with songs that were new back then, and we would love it if you hit us up on Twitter at underscore Reminiscent FM. Let us know some of your favorite songs and albums that came out in the year 2004. We love you all. We're going to talk to you next week. Stay home. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.